Okay, so today uh, we will talk about the commutation in uh, controlled rectifiers. So the idea is uh, very similar to what we did uh, with single phase uh, diode rectifiers. You know, just to uh, have a reminder. So we have a current source here. I mean, it can be a, like really large inductance, but on top of that, we also have a, a inductance like the grid inductance on, on the source side. So in normal conditions, you expect the current to be in a square waveform, but you know that kind of sharp edges implies like really large voltage on the inductor, so you cannot change the inductor current uh, that sharply. And because of the because of that, there will be some uh, commutation time. So both of uh, both of the thyristors will be in conduction. So let's say at first uh, this was in conducting mode so you know we have the current path like that and when you know that one is uh, still conducting and i have now the firing angle and just you know fire the next uh, pair of uh, thyristors so that would get into the conduction mode so there will be some time so there will be some time where you know that original thyristors are conducting and they're you know, current are reducing and the next set of uh, thyristors are taking back the current and th they will be like both of those uh, two paths will be uh, conducting uh, some current until all of that current, let's say this is 10 amps at first, so all that 10 amps is transferred from that thyristor to that thyristor. So of course it will uh, take some time and during that time what we know is you know that thing is in conduction if this is like the zero voltage so that will be also zero volts here and because of that i have the vs i have the vls so i have uh, vls is equal to vs or i can write vls is equal to ls times di over dt and this will be vs and again you know that can be represented that is the you know rms voltage uh, the actual voltage so that it can be written as 2 Vs times sine omega t. So basically I try to find how long does it take how long does it take uh, for that current to pass from here. So initially I mean f if you look at from the conductor side uh, sorry from the grid side so if it were a square waveform it was going to be transferred either from uh, ID to minus ID or from minus ID to ID so I want to calculate the time to transfer from minus ID to ID or vice versa okay so that was the main idea so it is the same logic the same derivations like we did in the diode rectifiers but of course depending on on the firing angle we have a you know different uh, time for commutation time so let's have a look at the voltages so normally what you expect is if you have a firing angle of alpha so this is where you know you fire and without commutation uh, i had like my thyristors net of thyristors net uh, next set of thyristors are you know directly getting in the commutation then you had that shape but during so what is happening uh, during that time is you have in the output voltage you have zero output voltage okay if during commutation commutation means also the overlap per overlap period and when these two conductions these two paths are uh, get uh, commit uh, get getting conduction at the same time you have zero voltage at the output and because of that uh, instead of having that uh, red line okay that red line which uh, directly jumps from some minus voltage to positive voltage what we have is uh, some period with let me show it here we'll have that kind of zero voltage and after the commutation commutation period ends then I will have the original voltage so again we will do the same trick let's try to calculate that area okay that area here how much voltage that we are losing and let's try to calculate 
how long does it take uh, to to make that transition okay so we will have the same thing the integrations will be same but of course if you remember it from the diet rectifiers the commutation just starts from the zero so we were uh, trying to calculate that area but now i will try to calculate uh, this area you know and if the area is constant okay as the firing angle increases it will take less time okay because the sine uh, magnitude is getting bigger so let's try to let's try to get uh, those uh, calculations mathematically okay so let's uh, try to calculate uh, do that area uh, let me have more uh, space for the calculations so for continuity let me write uh, i know the vl is equal uh, ls di t over dt and this is equal to as i written it is equal to source voltage which is equal to square root vs times sine omega t d omega t so now uh, i mean if you look at that area i will try to calculate that area now it is starting from alpha and it is going up to alpha plus u right so i will write that area so it is equal to alpha alpha plus u and it is again it is the i mean this is uh, vs so the peak is square root 2 vs so that is square 2 vs uh, sine omega t so i will write that one like that square root 2 vs sine omega t right d omega t nope. and that is you know it will be the same logic instead you know don't get confused again uh, with that one so in the meantime uh, my current is uh, going from let's say minus id to id right so it is going from minus id to id and i can write uh, that area like omega ls minus id to id so it is you know, directly same thing with the diode rectifier the only differences in the diode rectifiers i used zero to you because a uh, diode rectifier is identical to a thyristor case with a firing angle of zero but here i have from alpha to alpha plus u right so i can you know write that thing and that is equal to area that is equal to area in the original one and this part is equal to 2 omega ls id so from the voltage drop from the voltage drop point of view i will have the same amount of voltage drop and i will uh, show it uh, shortly so let's try to uh, find the actual commutation time how long does it take uh, for that transition so let's try to write that integral so it is you know let's take those things outside vs and uh, uh, the integral of sine is minus cosine so you can write it is like uh, minus minus cosine uh, alpha so it becomes cosine alpha and minus okay cosine alpha plus u so you can do it uh, yourself and that is equal to 2 omega ls i2 so you can get omega mm, sorry alpha plus u is equal to cosine alpha okay minus i'm getting those things here so 2 omega ls id divided by square root 2 vs okay so i mean you can find that angle and once you know alpha is known uh, you can get you can get the time it is required uh, for uh, that uh, commutation time in in general i mean if you look at that equation that area okay that area is you know 2 omega ls id most of the time you know your omega is not changing it's the grid frequency your ls is not changing and let's say you are uh, looking for the same amount of current so that is you know kind of uh, constant so that area has to be constant so if you are uh, let me clean that part a little bit okay so what does it implies if you are having a commutation time let's say i don't know 30 degrees and you have 
I don't know how many milliseconds of here and if you are having some commutation at 45 degrees okay so that implies you know that area and the commutation time here will be same and the height of that rectangle is now increasing so that implies the actual commutation time will get uh, smaller as long as you have that transition so that is like uh, kind of that AU is kind of tax that you need to pay to charge the inductor from minus ID to ID or vice versa and if you have higher voltages during that time you know that you know having that area or having that transition takes a shorter amount of time in terms of seconds okay so let's try to uh, calculate the voltage okay so uh, the voltage drop this is the voltage drop okay and it is either that area divided by p or you are having that loss of an uh, area because originally if you didn't have any commutation you will have that area on top of the overall area so you are losing that area over full period so either you can multiply that thing divided by 2p or you can have that area divided by p and actually if you write that thing i am just using that equation so it is 2 omega ls id divided by p so this is you know this is exactly the same uh, voltage drop that we have with the uh, diode rectifiers and you can write as a function of alpha we know the rectifier normal output is cosine alpha 0 0.9 uh, sorry vs cosine alpha which you know if you have alpha equal to zero it is the diode rectifier and now you have minus that voltage drop so it 2 omega ls id divided by p right so that is you know uh, that is the equivalent voltage you know after uh, the effect of the commutation so basically you have slightly less voltage uh, without compared to uh, voltage uh, without any great inductance so so that is uh, what you have uh, this is the area this is all my uh, derivations here so you can uh, calculate uh, alpha or you can also uh, calculate the voltage drop and you know it is the same thing if you just put alpha is equal to zero it is identical to a diode uh, rectifier cool so let's uh, keep that exercise for later and let's have a look at a practical thyristor converter so let's say you are using it to drive a motor drive a dc motor drive okay so i'm having a real grid with some line inductance i have my thyristors and you have this is not a you know original volt source this is but uh, back emf of dc motor and actually in the previous years with the hardware projects there were some groups used that topology and then you have the armature resistance usually this is a kind of low 0 0.1 ohm or depending on the motor size and also because of the you know turns in the dc motor you have some inductance here so you know because of that inductance that current that load current uh, doesn't want to change much but it will uh, change slightly and again our assumptions with the uh, current source is you know if you have a large inductor uh, then the, the current uh, magnitude assumed to be constant anyway so let's say i mean we will you will solve some uh, simulations with that topology in the further assignments but just to have an understanding let's try to uh, see a realistic uh, voltage output right and for this case again uh, similar to we discussed in the previous videos let's say we are in the continuous conduction mode right so if you are in the continuous conduction mode so now you are coming so now at that area at alpha you are firing your uh, thyristors 
but there is some uh, there is some uh, grid inductance so you will have again the commutation but in the commutation then you have you know that voltage that zero voltage then after that you are jumping at out that value but again uh, in the in an ideal case your thyristors forward voltage is assumed to be zero but here we have the practical thyristors and we have uh, some resistances and inductances in line path so there will be some uh, slightly voltage drop so it's not identical to vs but slightly lower than vs then it will be going high and actually if you look at the current waveform let's focus on the current waveform so what you have here I mean that line uh, that is your uh, EA or back EMF or ED in our figure so from our from our inductor okay so you have VS at one side and you have ED on the other side of course that behaves like an inductive so if VS is larger than your back EMF then it is charging up your uh, inductors if that thing is lower than your uh, back EMF then it will be decreasing and we see you know that trend whenever I have a larger voltage than ED so my inductor or my uh, output current is going up okay going up 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 and for where whenever they are equal to each other so it reach its peaks then your output you know voltage gets smaller than back EMF so the current direction I mean, the current cannot change instantaneously it is still in that way but its magnitude its magnitude is getting uh, smaller so actually now it's getting smaller and smaller until you know until you fire for the next set of things and you have commutation period and if you look at the output voltage as our output current it will be you know kind of uh, time varying signal like that so it's always in the positive direction because as the nature of the uh, thyristor converters you cannot have a negative direction current because they behave like a diode even if you apply a gate signal but you have some variation so if your inductances are you know very very large which we assumed in the in the current source case that uh, ripple is assumed to be zero but in a practical case there will be some variation and this is for the uh, this is for the continuous uh, conduction case if your average if your average current let's say the load at the load in the DC motors are reduced or let's say you are applying a firing angle at a slightly later angle because it will keep dropping dropping and if you fire after that instant then the current will reach to zero but they will not get into the reverse mode right if, if it's just reached to zero it will just you know cut off the current but they don't have capability of flowing current in the reverse direction so what we will have is the discontinuous uh, conduction mode okay for that one sorry I, I talked uh, I forgot to mention about commutation and the nice thing about that one is I mean uh, here we have the ID max and here we have the ID mean right so the current okay the current gets into minimum voltages during transition and the you know remember the time that's required for uh, commutation is from minus current to some current and if that current gets smaller the commutation period gets smaller as well so because of that the voltage drop here you know the voltage drop here is calculated not based on the maximum value not cal based uh, calculated based on the average value but it is calculated based on the minimum value because that is where actually the commutation takes place so with that variation usually you don't want the current to change much but anyway if you just let it where I a little bit the commutation will happen at the minimum point and it will take a shorter amount of time and actually if you wait long enough if you wait long enough okay uh, okay this is uh, the average value so the average value again let me 
delete that part a little bit so at the end of day you have you have some current I mean in the average value you can either calculate it from trigonometry that's the same thing but if it is uh, uh, if it is at the steady state remember the voltage the voltage average voltages at those inductors will be zero over one period because if it is non-zero then it means the current is climbing up and if they are like uh, in the steady state you have one voltage source here and you have uh, another voltage source at the output and there is just the resistive component so the average current can be calculated as you know the average voltage at the VD minus ED average uh, back EMF voltage divided by RT anyway that's not that important what I would like to emphasize is the discontinuous uh, conduction mode if your average ID is small what is happening is you are charging use the red pen so you are charging your current until when? Until VD and ED are equal to each other. So now it reached its peak. Now it's reducing, but you are not firing. You are not firing. So this is where, you know, the firing uh, happens. But at that instant, I is equal to zero. Okay, your current reaches to zero. And if current is reaches to zero, what will happen? Let me clean those parts again. Okay, so in the discontinuous conduction mode, in the discontinuous conduction mode, you have that thing reached to zero, that thing reached to zero, that is off, that is off, that is off, that is off. So you disconnected your grid with your load, and once it is disconnected, then you still have that back EMF voltage here. There is no current here, there is no current here. So during that one, that will be equal to ED. So instead of, you know, in commutation, you have zero voltage and in the discontinuous mode that is uh, disconnected from source and you have that voltage source reflected to your uh, motor terminals. Okay. So this is exactly what's happening. As soon as current reaches to zero and it cannot go to negative region, so your voltage uh, jumps to ED and you wait 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 and then the firing angle comes in then you just uh, fire it okay so you know usually that is that is expected but you need to be careful about control especially open loop control because if your firing angle is just happened to be in the continuous conduction mode you have you know some zero voltage but if it just gets into the conduction mode instead of you know keeping at zero voltage you have some uh, positive region for some time so vd average you know gets higher in this continuous conduction mode okay and actually here is a, a figure you know we, we don't have to calculate it mathematically but just as an understanding so you have current here okay you have the average voltage on the other side and what you see this is with commutation let's say this is like a firing angle is zero so it is equal to a diode uh, rectifier okay so as the current i mean you have some reduction so it is not perfectly horizontal but it is slightly tilted because uh, remember the voltage drop due to commutation is directly proportional to the current okay as you have higher and higher voltages there will be some uh, drop in the output voltage due to the commutation due to voltage drop in the grid inductance okay so it comes like that and that instant okay at that instant this becomes discontinuous conduction mode okay so your current gets smaller and smaller so the region the, the region that you that the voltage increases for uh, the discontinuous conduction mode gets higher and higher okay so what's happening with the average voltage you have a kind of high increase at that voltage i mean this is just the numbers for the given example it doesn't have to be always that number but anyway so you have let me use the red thing so you have here you have here 
okay probably here it is here so you have okay so here you have the continuous conduction mode and here this is the discontinuous conduction mode I mean discontinuous conduction mode is not bad okay is not bad and in some cases it's especially for DC DC converters for flyback converters uh, discontinuous conduction mode usually increases your efficiency by uh, reducing switching losses we will uh, talk about in the following weeks but you need to be careful you need to be careful about uh, using open loop control because you can say okay my uh, output voltage is proportional proportional with uh, firing angle okay cosine alpha yes this is true you have a linear relationship and even if you don't have any grid uh, grid inductance that's supposed to be like horizontal so you know exactly what should be the what what, what will be the output voltage for a given uh, firing angle for continuous conduction mode but if you get into the discontinuous uh, conduction mode even if you keep even if you keep the firing angle constant okay you will have a kind of nonlinear relation uh, nonlinear relation uh, with the firing angle so you can't be sure okay I will have exactly that amount of uh, voltage so what should be done I mean again for most of the converters uh, they are not uh, used in like open loop control either uh, you use uh, some kind of uh, current sensor okay you can use some current sensor with which you should be doing in your uh, hardware projects or you have some voltage sensor you so you measure your uh, output voltage okay then you put into some kind of controller okay and for that controller you have some reference current or reference voltage and you have your controller then basically controls uh, your uh, gate signal so you have some kind of feedback loop okay so if you have that feedback loop even if your controller gets into the discontinuous conduction mode you know that and then you have uh, you have option uh, to fix it and you can keep the output voltage or current at the desired value okay so uh, lastly uh, let's talk about the inverter mode and we talk about that one uh, your output voltage if your output voltage becomes less than zero if your firing angle is from 90 to 180 degrees right so in that case that VD is smaller than zero but for the current uh, if you have a current source here you still have that ID so that implies the power okay the power is flowing from load side to source side so that only that is only possible uh, with some kind of active power source so for example it can be a DC motor it can be a photovoltaic system whatever but that implies you need to have some kind of power you cannot get into the inverter mode uh, if you have a resistive load here okay if you have a resistive load you know whenever the voltage uh, gets into zero uh, the current will reach to zero even if you make the voltage uh, less than zero for a resistive load the current would like to flow in the opposite direction but it is not possible okay so for that we need to have some kind of active power source so let's uh, briefly look at the uh, output voltage waveforms so let's say you are I mean this is zero degrees this is 90 degrees so let's say I'm firing at 120 degrees right so in the previous case if it were let's say just 30 degrees firing angle you have you know that kind of uh, voltage waveform but now it is keep it staying at the negative current value down to 120 degrees then you fire it again okay then you fire it again and this is with the commutation there will be some commutation time then it will jump just slightly to the positive region then it will uh, goes like that actually you can 
uh, do that with the simulation link I just uh, gave you in the previous lecture you can try uh, different firing angles so now the problem here is I have the commutation I have the commutation okay and after the commutation I have just that amount of time uh, left uh, for positive conduction so uh, you you require some uh, positive conduction uh, pos pos forward bias case so you know you can uh, cut off the current and so on okay so here you have the first uh, one and two are conducting and here are like three and four are conducting and there's uh, the thyristor voltage if you look at the thyristor voltage whenever whenever it is uh, conducting you have the zero voltage okay during its conducting then it needs to block and after uh, just after the uh, commutation ends then it just gets into some negative region then it is just forward biased again right so these are you know the conducting thyristor periods so you have that amount of time you have that amount of time for uh, thyristor to re reset itself so the current uh, just come to zero so that is called that is called the extinction angle okay so extinction angle is the required amount of time okay so you have 180 degrees okay and let's say 120 degrees is just uh, gone for the firing angle and you have a couple of degrees for uh, for the commutation period and the time okay the time required for that one is the extinction angle and actually if you look at the data sheets if you look at the data sheets there is a minimum amount of time for thyristor because during that time the thyristor needs a negative voltage so you have the thyristor and again remember it has some you know capacitances and that kind of things so it needs some kind of negative voltage so you need to get uh, rid of the, those uh, charges in the PN junctions of the thyristor and once you get rid of those charges then the thyristor can get into the off mode okay but if you keep if you keep firing angle if you keep firing angle higher and higher so if you want to apply I don't know a firing angle of 110 let's say if you apply a firing angle of 179 degrees then basically you don't have enough time for commutation and for extinction okay so long story short uh, if you are working at the inverter mode alpha you know cannot go to directly to 180 degrees it is there's a limit to the maximum firing angle that you can use depending on the commutation angle and also firing angle let's say if these two takes I don't know 10 degrees then your firing angle should be less than 170 degrees in practical thyristors anyway you will you will see those things in your assignments okay so that's all uh, for this single phase uh, thyristor rectifiers